Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So in this video, we are going to look into one of the useful and important framework that is provided by Spring called as Spring Batch. Now Spring Batch is used by many organizations inside the IT industry and very very important framework when it comes to large data processing which may need to be done on daily basis right so in this video we are going to understand what exactly is the architecture of the spring batch so this is going to be a fun video so sit back relax and enjoy the show so let's first jump into the agenda of this particular video so let me just open it real quick so simple agenda right first we are going to look into why we need spring batch and what exactly it is right after that we are going to go through the architecture of spring batch we are going to look into all the internal components that we have inside spring batch so in this video we are going to cover architecture in the part two of this video we are going to go through actual example and we are going to implement spring batch framework so let's get started and let's look into why spring batch right so let's go over here and let's go through this scenario over here right so let's say there is this bank and the bank is reaching out to you saying that i want a software right so as an it engineer we will create a software for bank and what bank wants is bank wants a bank statement generator which will generate detailed account statements for the users of bank right now bank have millions of users. bank will provide the daily data of the customer transactions each day right each day let's say end of the day bank closes and they will provide the data to your software right now you have to take that data load it into your system and then process it and then provide the reports right now it is a kind of a daily job and daily millions of transactions will happen right so the job that this particular bank want us to do is let's say they want to pull us the transaction history right let's say they want to calculate the fees on various transactions or various aspect that banks provides right after that they want us to format the specific statements and provide it via email or make it available anywhere online right so that is basically the requirement of the bank now the main point over here is our software will need to pull the data from the bank on daily basis and the data is huge right the data is like millions of records let's say and that we are doing on daily basis right now when our application is pulling that data how much time it will take to process that data and insert that data inside your database let's say can you imagine how big operation that is let's say this bank is providing data in a csv format it will just send you a csv at the end of the day they have it we just want to do a processing and format it in a nice format and calculate various aspects like transaction history and calculate fees over here so that is basically the task they want us to do right now what exactly we need to do inside our application we need to take that data we need to process all rows one by one right and we need to insert it inside our db so that we have a historical data as well with us right if there are millions of records how much time it will take and how much resources it will take to insert all those data inside your database right and how much time it will take to process that particular data right so it is kind of a tedious operation right now if it was one time then it was fine right it was fine if it was just for one time activity but we need to do it daily because bank will be open daily right we need to do this job daily so that is the reason we need to think into the aspect of resource utilization as well and doing that one by one will slow down the operation of the bank as well right they won't really get the output of our application within the given time that is again a problem right so they will look for alternate solution and they will go away from your application so what is the solution right the solution on this problem is spring batch basically right so let's see how spring batch will help us right so these are the advantages that spring batch will provide us right let's quickly go through it basically chunked processing right so basically spring batch reads transactions for few hundred customers at a time and processes them in chunks right so it will process them in chunks right in parallel and write them into a database into bulk right so it's a bulk insert operation basically that uh, spring batch will do whatever job we want to execute we can schedule that as well right so let's say by end of the day bank is giving you data you don't have to sit and uh, observe what exactly is happening right you just need to schedule your job and that job will execute at whatever time you want right so that is basically one of the advantage you can just schedule the execution error handling and retry let's say some step inside your job is failing right some step is failing then you can retry it as well right if one job is failing drastically you can again restart that right so that is again easy and monitoring of the jobs is again 
very easy inside Spring Batch, right? Now here we have looked into a lot of terminologies. So all those terminologies will be cleared when we look into the architecture, right? Now for this particular use case, if Spring Batch is giving you these many advantages, then why not to use it? So for such kind of scenarios, Spring Batch will make your life very easy, right? So that is why Spring came up with such framework and which is very useful for industries or organizations which are doing heavy operations on daily basis, right? So that is basically why we use Spring Batch, right? Now what exactly is Spring Batch, right? What exactly it is? Now let's go to this documentation. So the source of information I'm giving you is coming from the Spring documentation. I will add the link in description. You can go ahead and check. So what exactly is Spring Batch? So Spring Batch is nothing but a framework. It's a lightweight comprehensive framework which is specifically designed to enable the development of batch applications. Batch applications means you have a lot of data and you want to save it in batch or process it inside a batch, right? Also that are vital for daily operations of enterprise systems. That means processing large chunk of data on daily basis, right? If you want to do that, go with Spring Batch. And Spring Batch is totally built upon a Spring Framework. So it will be easily integrated inside your Spring or Spring Boot applications. You just need to add a dependency. Well, that is something which we are going to look into part two of this video. So don't worry about that. We are going to actually write a code and insert a large data basically, right? Now, let me quickly show you a data set that I have with me. So let me just pull it up. So this is basically the customer data set that we have. Let me just maximize it. So as you can see over here, we have a lot of records. So if you can see, we have thousand records over here. So this is basically the customer data that we have. And this kind of data set, if you start adding into your database by using one by one row, then it is going to take a lot of time, right? And it will consume a lot of resources. Now these are just thousand, right? But what if you have a million and this kind of data set we are going to add inside database by using Spring Batch when we see actual implementation in part two of this video, a similar kind of data set we are going to use. So let me close that and let's go back over here. What and why we have seen right now. Let's jump into the architecture, right? Now let me jump to canvas and let me just scroll down over here. So this is basically the potential architecture of your Spring Batch, right? And these are various components that we have over here. Let's go through each of the component, right? Job launcher, right? Launcher means it will start a job, right? It's an interface that is provided by Spring Batch Framework, which will help you to launch or trigger a job, right? So if I go back over here, then job launcher is an interface for launching a job, right? Now, what exactly is job, right? The next question might be coming is what exactly is a job, right? The job is basically a sequence of tasks that you want to execute for certain purpose, right? For certain process. For example, once you get the data from the bank, you want to pull the transaction history for that particular data. Plus you want to calculate fees, plus you want to format the statements, plus you want to deliver it via email. So all this sequence of steps is kind of a job for us, right? So that's how we define a job. So there may be multiple jobs that you can have inside your application, right? There can be many jobs which you can run, right? Many type of job. Now this is one job that we want to do for bank, right? There may be another job that you want to do. The job is kind of an entity or name given to the entire batch process end to end, right? End to end batch process. One process is one job, right? Now let's go back over here in the documentation. The job will have a job instance, right? So there may be multiple instances of a job. You run it once, you run it twice, separate instances, right? And job instance will have job execution, right? So this particular instance I ran once, right? That is basically job execution. I executed it once. So that is basically the hierarchy that we have for job. So job will have job instance, then job execution, right? Also in Spring Batch, job is simply a container for step instances. Now job will have multiple steps. If you go back over here, this particular job will have multiple steps now, right? For example, if I go back, then we have this job. Now, how many steps we have over here? In first step, what we can do, we can pull transaction history. In second step, we can calculate fees. In third step, we can format the statement. And in the last step, which is the fourth step, what we can do is we can deliver it via email. Inside a job, we have various steps, right? So step is again a component inside a job, right? Which may be multiple steps and each step will have a different purpose 
and they will run one by one in a sequence right step is a domain object that means a name given to given to an independent sequential phase of a batch job right that means it is basically kind of a task inside your process and a job is composed of one or more steps right so job will have multiple steps and each step will have its own step execution right because that will be executed inside your job right so step execution represents a single attempt to execute a step so those are basically the entities that we are defining over here so we have job launcher which will start the job and this job will have multiple steps for example these steps that as we have seen and each step can do these three things right what are these three things first we have item reader right reader means it will read the data set right a data set that is provided by bank first what we can do we can read it so item reader is again an interface that is provided by a batch framework so it will just fetch the data from different type of inputs for example we have flat files for example xml or data source it can be anything right for example we have just seen this particular file right so this is basically the file which item reader will read out for us right read out and which we can process right then after that we have item processor where we can perform various kind of operations right various kind of operations we can perform after that we have item writer right item writer is again a similar functionality it is again a similar functionality as item reader so it's basically used for write operations that you have wherever you want to write the data for example inserting the data inside your database right so these three components we have now we can have multiple step inside we can have multiple operations like this right now the final component inside the architecture is a repository so what is job repository so it is kind of a repository or a database where we will store the details about these jobs right so if i go back over here so job repository is persistence mechanism for all the stereotype mentioned earlier right that means job launcher your job your step details about all of them will be stored inside your job repository for example when the job was first launched also details about your each step execution your job execution your job instance id step execution ids everything all the data is stored over here in a job repository right and you don't have to handle it explicitly the batch framework will take care of everything on its own right so we don't really need to do anything explicit in order to store the details about these jobs and the execution of that particular job or the execution of that particular step right the job repository will handle everything for us it will explicitly create tables for us inside the database and it will start storing all the details about job and step executions once we trigger or launch our job that is basically the use of job repository and that is basically the overall architecture of your spring batch right so spring batch architecture also we have seen now in the part 2 of this video we are going to implement spring batch in spring boot application right and we are going to create a job to insert a large data set inside our database for example we have seen a simple data source right so this is basically the csv file that we have so similar to that we are going to have a csv and we are going to store that huge data inside our database within few seconds right that is basically the simple agenda of part 2 of this video but very very interesting right and there are many things to learn over here if you don't want to miss that don't forget to subscribe code snippet so that is basically it i hope you have basic idea about spring batch architecture by now and why spring batch was introduced what exactly it is right so that's it for this video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they are also aware of spring batch framework architecture that's it for this video see you in the next video